So thank, uh, I want to thank you and uh, particularly thank uh, um, Hong and, and other organizers to give me this opportunity to be part of this amazing uh, symposium. So I will share what I'm doing and ask about um, 10 year work and uh, hopefully just very short uh, time to give you a story. So, so the thing we want to show you here is give you a sense of what virus we work on is actually bacteriophage and how they actually cause the infection. And uh, so we show three different type of phage, uh, <coughs> how they actually particularly form this uh, transient channel to allow them uh, uh, translocate DNA across the bacterial uh, uh, cell envelope. So all the phage, what is a phage is molecule from the Roger Henry. And they show basic bacteriophage everywhere, including any one of the sea water to the see the virus everywhere. And they probably one of the most abundant uh, bacteria, uh, biological identity in the field. And also bacteriophage is responsible for, for much of the bacteria uh, evolution and the pathogenesis. So we think this is really important, also very simple machine. And this machine is also amazing nano machine, as you can see, this is just a tiny, almost like a, a half centuries old, probably one of the earlier uh, EM picture to show uh, a tiny uh, phage have a pack with tons of DNA. And uh, this is one of the, the classic phages, P4. So you have the beautiful capsule with pale, with all this beautiful machine to allow these uh, uh, phages assembling DNA in the capsule and also allow them to eject uh, into the uh, uh, host bacteria. And so P, P, uh, P4 is because it's a very good system, so also one of the nice uh, uh, model system for develop a cryo-EM. And the more recently, this because this uh, cryo-EM revolution, now this P7 phase pair can show this beautiful for a uh, pale machine by Peter Na uh, Naiman's lab recently. And they show this is just a small part of the base plate. And they, it's a fascinating machine. They actually show this in cover of the nature uh, two years ago. And the seminars, uh, we hear a beautiful story this morning from um, <clears throat> Gabriel Nanda. When he actually was a graduate student uh, 12 years ago, this is his beautiful work from another phage called P22. And this is a very short uh, tail and packed with DNA and also a nice tail machine. So he was probably one of the first people to do asymmetric reconstruction. So you can see uh, the, the, this portal. So he also generated nice cover for the science magazine. And one of the key things here is there's a uh, of a lot of so-called ejection protein was, was known to store inside the capsule. And uh, initially it was a proposal like this, but later on was shown there's other, the exact location was actually not known for P22. But uh, a similar phage for P7 was uh, done by um, um, uh, uh, another lab show, this is actually a uh, uh, this core protein actually store inside the phage capsule. And so <clears throat> when, when John lab at Purdue, he basically showed this different symmetry of this uh, so-called core protein was stored inside capsule and they are important for, for DNA translocation. And so and how to be this DNA uh, translocation and the phage infection, we may fully understand part of the reason is uh, and most of the study was based on this classic uh, P, P, uh, four phage, in fact, uh, E. coli, but traditional EM approach. Until almost uh, uh, five years ago, cry EM started to be used, utilized to study how this uh, phage infection and uh, it showed early stage of the uh, absorption. So, but the, all the detail remain to be resolved. So what we, is, when I, start a lab, so we would have this simple question is, how the actual phage 
was able to effectively translocate the protein uh, across this uh, gram negative bacteria. Uh, you know, have outer membrane and the cell wall and the inner membrane. And uh, this is a T4 like phage, and contract tail phage, and short phage, uh, tail phage like P22 and T7. How they able to allow this DNA cross this uh, boundary? So we will show you today by using cryotomography, we're able to see this uh, transient trans envelope channel uh, by very uh, different uh, uh, phage. And uh, so we start with this first experiment we did many years ago, is we actually infect T7, uh, infect the E. coli cell with a, a T4 phage. So this is just the E. coli cell. And so in the, uh, and it's barely, you can hardly see there's a small T, T, uh, T4 there. By zooming, you can actually start to see this tiny uh, T4 contract already, but uh, uh, DNA already released. But the resolution is relatively low because the, uh, the cell is about one micron, and so you can see it's very dark. It's very hard to see the detail. So we want to uh, approach this uh, problem by, uh, by start to use an approach called bacterial mini cell approach. So the idea is uh, the typical uh, E. coli is too big for a traditional cryo-EM approach without obviously cryo-section and uh, fit manning. So, and we make a skinny cell with a point mutation, so the cell is much skinny, and they still preserve all the other feature, uh, but this still recently could be optimized, so we use a mini cell, and so by another genetic mutation, so you can actually make a small mini cell, and there's much smaller than the regular cell, but still maintain the cell envelope. And most importantly, is the outer membrane cell wall and the inner membrane are the key feature. And so this became our model system to study uh, uh, the infection. So this is just to show you, uh, we start with the T4 uh, infection, and this is a typical micrograph, and we, you can see some regular big cell and uh, then some mini cell. Um, by using Siri EM, so we actually collect homogram out of this uh, uh, Q series. So you can see actually uh, T4 uh, start to interact with uh, mini cell. At this early stage, this is just incubated briefly. So you barely see the interaction between the phage and the whole cell. By generally construction, and then you can start to see uh, this is a capsi with a tail, uh, contract tail, but then you can see the start of fiber start to reach out to touch the host uh, um, out, uh, membrane and still maintain part of the, this tail, tail, many of the tail fiber still fold back along the, 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 the tail sheath. So this is what we think is the earlier interaction so probably first uh, interaction they can uh, preserve between this uh, uh, um, phage and host. By looking at all the snapshot, and from early stage, then you start to see the interaction perpendicularly, then start to contraction, and ultimately you can see DNA start to release. So we start to capture the, the key intermediate during this uh, phage T7 infection. So by subtomal average together, so you can start to see uh, the phage uh, have caps DNA, then start to release. Ultimately, DNA uh, release into the the, the whole, cell, uh, whole cell. And however, as you may notice that you can barely see the outer membrane. Uh, where is this channel? How they actually form this translucent envelope channel? So now we can actually start to classify. Based on this region, that you can see the tail, the, the needle of the T4 and outer membrane. Then you may notice something really striking. If this is the tip, then you can see the, the inner membrane have this pretty dramatic remodeling to allow this whole inner membrane to interact with the needle to form part of a channel. 
So if we can put this into a, a slightly refined, and then you can, uh, hopefully you can see this host membrane remodeling is pretty dramatic. And uh, one of the things, uh, typically the spacing between inner membrane and outer membrane is about 30 nanometer. But now, because it's changing, so you really end up with uh, about half of the, uh, uh, the size. And so we think this is actually the tail, the channel from T4 came from part of the tail tube. And so this is the before the contraction. So this is the tail tube in the middle of the sheath. And so this is the zoom in, have a needle and zoom in. So now we put them to side by side. So based on this high resolution structure, so you can see this is before contraction and there's a, a punch apparatus. And then after they get into the, uh, to the pepper glycan layer, and this part will be so shaped, then allow this uh, part of the tail tube portion called GP20 uh, interact with the inner membrane and to form this uh, uh, intrinsically part of the, this T4 channel. So I use this to uh, show you uh, a first example that we can use the uh, uh, tomography to capture this pretty dramatically structure change from the host membrane and then allow to see this uh, uh, a channel across inner membrane and uh, outer membrane and inner membrane and with this uh, 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 um, um, T4 uh, uh, tail tube from this channel. So now we look at the uh, switch to a, a very different phage and this is the P22 and uh, uh, have a capsid and with uh, this uh, uh, so-called uh, tail, P, uh, GP9 tail, and also have a needle structure. And this had been studied previously by uh, Gabriel many years ago. So, so now the question is uh, how this actually tiny phage tail machine uh, able to cross this uh, LPS and uh, outer membrane and peptide glycan layer plus this, and um, because this machine is much shorter and also have this all the other component. And so we start with the first thing is how they can able to cross this LPS. And uh, so, so one of the protein called known as uh, one of the first crystal structure was formed almost 20 some years ago. And they're able to show this so-called GP9 trimer from trimer they can actually binding on LPS O antigen. So they can digest hydrolyze O antigen. And so here's the, this machine is here. So we want to know how this actually interacts with LPS ultimately across this wall. So, and so one of the first thing we saw is if you incubate this uh, uh, P22 with some nano mini cell, so you end up with a, a phage almost identical and they are particularly uh, uh, attached to the outer membrane. So needles still there. And so, so able to we use this uh, uh, crystal structure plus some single particle high resolution. So we're able to build in all this model in to show this is actually possibly one of the first uh, intermediate stage. And when after LPS and the GP9 bonding, they form this uh, oblique pet absorption. So then, and after this, and this phage will start to form this so-called channel. And this channel was, a, uh, was an, in the original tomogram, you hardly see it. By averaging them, then you can start to see this uh, 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 channel form uh, between the outer membrane and the inner membrane. And if we can room in, you can start to see actually an uh, outer membrane bilayer plus this so-called, we call the membrane pore. So the channel starts from the outer membrane from this large membrane pore, and presumably can start to see DNA strain getting to ultimately go to the outer membrane. So this structure and uh, give you a, a, a probably one of the first uh, impressions of how this actually Almost 40 nanometer 
transembolic channel was formed underneath this uh, machine uh, called uh, GP10. Uh, um, then they form this uh, a channel. First form this uh, what's called accelerator channel, and they form they cross this uh, host membrane, form like a membrane pore, and then they cross this uh, paper paper glycan, uh, uh, PG layer. Ultimately, cross this uh, two membrane. And so this is just zooming to show uh, this GP9 protein and, uh, and the other cell. So then we obviously want to test this, our model, whether this, three, this 40 nanometer protein a channel was formed by these three important uh, E protein that was known important for the DNA translocation. But after DNA, we need this three gene, so you we able to still able to form this uh, phage, and then the phage is still able to absorb. Is still keep this GP9 protein. They are able to absorb to down the surface. By averaging, you can start to see that actually they still maintain this uh, called spike protein spike. However, they don't form this channel anymore. So now we basically show uh, three protein can actually form this important uh, 40 nanometer space, the channel that was shown here. They from the whole uh, 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 GP brain protein called GP10, then ultimately form this whole protein about 40 nanometer, was formed by three protein. And we, we also did some other individual uh, gene deletion, able to show this portion corresponding to one other protein called GP7 and this corresponding 20, ultimately there's a GP16. Uh, um, um, so by putting this together, we show a model, and this model is uh, when the phage starts to absorb to the cell surface, they first uh, interact with LPS, by hydrolyzed LPS, and they able to bring this phage obliquely attached to the host, uh, uh, the outer membrane, and then they're able to form this uh, needle, get a penetrate the, the uh, outer membrane, then trigger the, uh, this uh, so-called formation of the channel, uh, cellular channel, and then ultimately they secrete other three protein to cross this whole protein to allow this uh, DNA Translocate across this uh, 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 about 40 nanometer spacing between the host uh, uh, out membrane and the inner membrane. So this just give you a sense of uh, one short protein uh, phage. We able to to store the capsid uh, protein uh, in in the capsid, and then they able to uh, uh, translocate from this channel and to allow DNA translocation. So this is a phage, in fact, some nana. So we've been also working on another phage, very similar, but it's uh, 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 in a way distinguished uh, uh, because they have this uh, uh, so-called tail, uh, short tail. And this short tail have associated with multiple fiber and they interact with uh, E. coli. So one of the things we showed many years ago is when we interact with host uh, E. coli mini cell, for example, so you can see this uh, fiber start to have a pretty big conformation change. And then you can see the tail of the short tail interact with the host membrane. Then they form the channel. So now the question is how can we imp see the channel that with uh, we see like a P22. So we use this uh, just one of the only tomograph to show this uh, 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 E. coli was infected by this P, uh, T, P7 short tail phage um, by generated reconstruction. So you can actually start to see a lot of the channel as we expect to see and uh, and by, but obviously there's a lot of uh, data there to allow this uh, 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 classification where it require to see this uh, channel. Uh, but obviously this channel is actually different from the P22. 
but we can see the this uh, outer membrane then cross this uh, so-called uh, pepagaecan layer and then ultimately reach the inner membrane. And then we also start to see some additional density and we will uh, hypothesize a part of the, uh, the, the phage protein uh, originally stored inside the capsid, ultimately formed. However, with more and more data, so we can actually start to see uh, much more detail of this, uh, particular in the inner membrane region. And so uh, this particularly striking feature, getting more and more uh, um, striking. So this is again in the inner membrane. Then you see this store-like structure with this feature. So by fitting this uh, known F1, F0 ATPase, now we can actually start to see something pretty striking. And that's all not something we expected when we start this project. So you can actually start to see uh, F0, F1 ATPase was actually formed around this region that uh, was, 